True Blues 97.5. Good morning. It's Scott Shaver. And for the next, I don't know, few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. I have no idea where this is going to go. I talk a lot. We could be here for a couple hours. (laughs) Uh, Kirk Detweiler is with me. And uh, Kirk uh, lives here in Marion, but you were one of those unfortunate souls that got stuck on a cruise ship for a long time now. I was, yes. Tell me about the whole journey. Tell me about the journey. Well, I've been cruising pretty much uh, since out of college. I got on my first ship in 1985 and started out as a singer, dancer on a, in a show in Hawaii. I worked my way up. And uh, so I've been with the cruise industry 35 years. Wow. I now work for an Indian company called Jalash. And uh, yeah, I was on, I was in uh, India and when the, you know what, hit the fan and and the cruise industry (laughs) came to a screeching halt. Yeah. So I stuck, I was stuck in the Indian ocean for 31 days with, uh, now there had to be a a moment of what is going on because there wasn't any kind of a lead up to this. It was like we are shutting Boom. you down right now. Well, I was watching the news, so you saw what was happening in China and stuff, but it hadn't really hit India yet. Mm-hmm. This cruise line is is out of Mumbai, and it it is for Indian people. This is the first time they've ever had like a luxury uh, cruise ship, so it's it's kind of a big deal. It's, company's only about a year old mm-hmm. um yeah so it hadn't really hit india yet and we we were we were scheduled and suddenly uh, a couple of groups canceled so we canceled a three-day cruise and we're like okay we'll come and then the next cruise a couple of groups canceled we didn't have enough people to sail and then suddenly psh, that's when it happened wow so we were very lucky we had no virus on board we had no passengers on board it was just uh like six seven hundred crew mm-hmm so you didn't have any passengers on the ship when everything stopped? No, because we oh, okay. quit. We dropped off our guests <laughs> March 5th, and they canceled the March 5th cruise. We had two three-day cruises in a row. Yeah. So we we didn't. I didn't know I was going to be stuck for 31 days. You're right. I, there are still 400 crew members there. I got off a month ago, and there's still 400 Indian crew members. The Indian government will not let them go home. Wow. They're still there. I, I, I'm st- in communication with them. But I, I, I've seen some things online. Mm-hmm. I, I'm reading some things that, you know, 50,000 plus cruise employees are still stuck on ships. Yep. And I think those are the ones just around the U.S. and the Virgin Islands and things like that. That doesn't count account for everyone around the world. Yeah, if you go like on CNN.com and they give you a list of ships that are still stranded, they never included ours. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because it, it wasn't uh, American. It was not geared to, there were no American, well, there were. There were eight Americans on board. Me and seven singers were because right. the entertainment is provided by a company out of Las Vegas. Okay. So yeah, so there were only eight Americans. So we kind of were under the radar there. Yeah. I was like, ah, we, ah, we're, we don't make CNN like these other cruise ships. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> and then, but my boss is like, no, that's good. You we don't, don't want. want <laughs> we don't want the bad press. They, yeah. You know, just stay under the radar. Yeah. All you're hearing about is you know Princess Cruise Lines oh, and yeah. Royal well, Caribbean Cruise Lines, and they're the ones taking the beating right oh, now. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I worked for Royal Caribbean for 20 years, so they and I still have a lot of friends there, and yeah, they're all n- nothing happening. Yeah, I've got yeah. a good buddy who's uh, uh, in Australia, is in Sydney, Australia, and he just got rehired by Royal Caribbean, and he's like, they're like, okay, uh, we're shutting down. Yeah. So he's low man on the totem pole. They are supposed to start cruising in June, but only going to bring out four ships. So yeah. it's like he's 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 got a job as a postman I say <laughs> in Australia. So. I was going to say this is uh, obviously it's hurt everyone, but cruise lines especially. Oh I my god! Have to think yeah. that this is really going to take a toll on the cruising industry. Yeah, I'm I'm told to uh, my boss is a guy named Charlie McDonald. He has a company in, in Miami, Florida. He's the one who provides the entertainment. Uh, he told me, you know. Get a summer job. He's like, we're going to call you back in August. We plan on going back to sea in September. But I really don't see that happening. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. All right. So uh, l- let's talk about being stuck on that ship. Uh, you come into port and they say, do they say you can't dock here? Uh, or do they say you can't dock, like you just m- can't leave this ship? March 5th, they... Uh, we got in March 5th. We let off our – we had only had 124. We did a cruise from Dubai to Mumbai. We only had 124. No, I take that back. We we deadheaded from from uh, Dubai. So I think it was March 8th we got into uh, to, to Mumbai with no passengers. But they immediately just said uh, no cruise shore leave because everybody goes to the mall. They go home wherever. Sure. No cruise shore leave. And uh, 
they then they send a medical team on and they made us all get our temperatures taken. They wanted to make sure, and they all came in like they look like the KKK with the white suits and <laughs> right. uh, you know masks. You know, everything. yeah, they the were, biohazard. And suits. we're just like, uh, yeah, we're like. We're not social distancing or anything, really. <laughs> uh, we were very lucky. We had no sickness on the board. They still don't. Uh, no, there's no virus there. So we were in a very safe place. Yes. Yeah. So how how does that weigh on your mind a little bit? You're like, we never even had someone on our ship that was sick, and here I am stuck in this. I don't know how big your I cabin know. is, but we were like, you <laughs> those know, cabins hey, on cruise ships aren't that big. Hey, we're healthy. Let <laughs> us come, yeah. and you know. But you know, at the, you know. At that time, we didn't really know that you can be asymptomatic mm. with corona. So they don't know. Even if your temperature is fine, you could be. So right. I guess the doctors knew more than we did. But, mm. yeah. And, it, and and the mindset was, at that point, we're like, okay, we're going to go three days. They didn't say, okay, you're going to be in ship for two months. So it's just it's, it was three days, and then it was six days, and then it was 10 days. And then it ended up being 31 days for me. Now they've been there two months. That's unbelievable. Yeah, we'll get the, to that uh, here in a second. How did they, what were the logistics? Uh, how did they get food to you? How did they get water well, to you? Well, they would let us dock uh, every couple of weeks just to get provisions mm-hmm. and fuel. Um, like when I left the ship, though, they wouldn't let us come in. We had to get a water taxi. Okay. So they sent a rickety old boat, <laughs> a little junk to get us ashore. Yeah. Holy but, uh, cow. Holy yeah, cow. It was an adventure. I'll bet. So uh, you were stuck there for 30 days. 31. 31 days. The 31st day was the worst. Can't, can't forget that one. Was Really? I what happened? It. I don't know. It was oh. <laughs> um, but you still have, how many people are still on that 400. ship? 400. There's still 400 that, yeah. are, that cannot get off of the ship. No, I, I'm in contact with uh, my assistant there. His name is Joe Ginder. And uh, so I'm, I even I said update. Hey, I'm going to be on the radio today. What, give me the update. <laughs> so he said there's 400. Now what happened is uh, March 30th they let us dock and they let off the crew members uh, who live in Mumbai mm-hmm. because they chartered buses and just took them to their doorstep. Um, they won't let the other Indian crew members off because there's no transportation to get them home. Yeah. India is completely shut down until May 17th. I mean, no public transportation, no domestic flights. So there's 400 crew members who live in Delhi or Goa or, you know, in other Cochin and other cities mm-hmm. that need to, you know, take either a bus or, you know, an airplane to get home. Right. But there's no transportation for them. Wow. So it's not, it, it's more logistic that they're stuck as yeah. opposed to bureaucratic. Right. Think, uh, right. Wow. All right. So uh, tell me how you got off of the ship. Oh, my gosh. I'm a hero <laughs> in this story. <laughs> So, you know, we don't have any, they, of course, we don't have any American TV, so I was getting my news online, and I was reading CNN.com, and I saw this story that said that the State Department was doing rescue missions for Americans who were trapped um, outside the country in remote areas. And I'm like, hey. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm, it had no information on how to, you know, if you're, like, stuck in the Indian Ocean and you're reading this, it didn't have any information. So what I did was I emailed, I went online and I emailed, uh, our two senators and our representative, and I, um, I, I told him my situation. I said, "There's hey, there's eight Americans. I'm the only Ohioan, but I said, you know, they don't care. They're going to save us." Mm-hmm. Uh, Sherrod Brown's office actually answered. One of his staff members answered, and he sent me a link to the State Department that was doing this. Okay. So the eight of us got online and we applied for this. There was rescue missions, and uh, about a week later, we get confirmation. Uh, and that way it was like, it was always touch and go because we were a mile or two off Mumbai. So they did, and uh, oh. the bureaucracy in India uh, is quite heavy mm-hmm. with their government. We missed. We had a flight for April fifth, and we missed it because immigration wouldn't clear us. They cleared us about four o'clock in the afternoon, and our flight was ten p.m. But we had to get f- from the ship in a little junk boat to the dock, and then hour drive to the Mumbai airport. Yeah. And but we had to go to the embassy. We had to go to the um, the consulate, the American consulate in Mumbai. Right. And then to the airport, and we would have missed the flight. Yeah. Jeez. So we finally the next day they got us off by noon. Mm-hmm. So we we made it. So that's how you got you got on a a junk from we the got boat the, yeah, to the little, shore and a then rickety water taxi. <laughs> um, oh man. And yeah, it was about a half hour. Yeah. Boat right in, and then, but the the funny thing from to me was. Um, 
I got seen by, while I was in the, to leave India, we were seen by three different doctors. We had our temperature taken at least five or seven times. We, we get in a, a Boeing 777 and it was packed full. It was all these people that were in, in India, Americans going home and they did a 17 hour flight to Atlanta. So after all the jumping through hoops to get off the ship and having our temperature taken and seeing three doctors to leave India, Mm -hmm. we, we arrive into Atlanta and it's like, Hey, come on. <laughs> Not one person. Well, nobody with masks. No nobody, temperatures no taken. No temperature. There. No. <laughs> didn't see any doctors. I saw a few signs that say "Don't touch your face." Mm-hmm. And I was just like, "Wow, what a difference!" Right. That, you know. So it was like, Ugh. and we were coming from India. They had no idea what we were bringing with us, and sure. it's like, no, nobody cared. Yeah. I, only half the people, like a um, TSA, were wearing masks. Mm-hmm. But this was Mar- uh, April sixth. So okay. I don't know. Yeah. I, think maybe things got more serious after that but i was i was stunned that they didn't even question us or make us fill out a form yeah you know so anyway crazy uh, sorry didn't mean to get political <laughs> i didn't hear any politics <laughs> in there uh talking with kirk detweiler again uh, who uh, has been working on cruise ships for the what'd you say the last 20 years 30 35 years, 35 35 years. years. Yeah, well, you and i are the same same boat no pun intended um uh, <laughs> um and uh, uh, you just got back from Mumbai, India. Yes. Uh, just a few weeks ago, actually. A month ago, yeah. So what is, uh, what's, I know you were kind of on a ship, you were isolated from what was going on in the general general population of India, but right. is that what you see with the big differences between what's going on in India and what's going on here, is that uh, we seem a little more lax in I think, I mean, if you watch you know, the news, and I like, you know, if you're in New York City, they're pretty much locked down, but they are so many people so tightly. Yeah. Um, yeah it's very lax here. I don't, I, except for the fact that things are closed, I don't feel any different. I mean, I work in Columbus and I go to like Kroger or Walmart there and, and you know, of course all the employees are wearing masks, but all, all the people are wearing masks. Mm-hmm. I go to Kroger here in Marion. I'm the only one wearing a mask except for the workers there. And I'm like... <laughs> I guess nobody's really that concerned here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen more masks, it seems like, in the last maybe two weeks yeah. uh, here. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I, I haven't really seen people changing too much of yeah. but I their get, regular I routine, except when it first started, everybody was locked down. Mm-hmm. That first week, you could have, you know, danced in the middle of Mount Vernon Avenue and never seen a car, you know, right. the, most, most of the day. And then the second week, a few cars. And the third week, a few more cars. Mm-hmm. And now it's just like we're right back to normal again. Yeah. I think, I mean, there's, aside from the prison, I don't think there's that many cases here in right. Marion County. Right. So that's, that's it exactly. Knock on wood. Yeah, right. But, uh, yeah, I've been Ubering. <laughs> I've been Ubering, and I, okay. I I go down to Columbus to Uber. All right. Uh, I wear my mask. I have, an N- I have two N95s. I'm selling one Z- for $1,000, by the way. <laughs> um, no markup there. <laughs> no, but... Uh, <laughs> But I also notice when I Uber, like maybe only one in five of my passengers wears a mask. Mm-hmm. I do, and I have hand sanitizer in my car mm-hmm. because uh, anyway. Well, you're gonna be, yeah, you're, you're meeting random people all day long. I you know. Don't know what I figure if they're doing. getting in an Uber with a strange guy, they would have a mask, but nah. Yeah. <laughs> Except, for, I mean, when they go into stores, they but people get into taxis and yeah, you know, not that many people are wearing masks. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So you got into Atlanta Airport. You said April, uh, early in April. April sixth. What was what was the traffic in the airport? Oh like? my gosh! I, well, first of all, we got in at five thirty in the morning. I think oh. we were the only plane in the entire airport. It was it completely. <laughs> it was like ghost town. Really? Yeah. yeah. I've never seen Atlanta like that. I've been there many times. I know that's the busiest airport in the world. Yeah. And I flew. And I flew from uh, Atlanta to Columbus, and there it was a big plane. Uh-huh. I mean, it was, and there were only ten ten of us on 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 that. Wow. Probably a two hundred seater plane. Yeah. So yeah, plenty of social distancing. I guess. But they so. made us. They made us wear the mask on the plane. Mm-hmm. Or they advised us to. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So, are you going to go back to the cruise industry? Well, um, this because uh, they keep talking about a second wave coming. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to be totally. It's going to take a couple of years for that industry to bounce back. Mm-hmm. I mean, after nine eleven, the same thing happened. Yes. Um, but it only lasted about six weeks. I, I mean, we didn't shut down. I was on the uh, work for Royal Caribbean at the time. I was on the Explorer of the Seas, and I was in St. Thomas when 9/11 happened, and that was a, like a 3,500 passenger. So the next, 
maybe six weeks, we had like half crowds, like 1,800 people. But after they opened the airports back up and everybody, the the cruise industry actually, after the initial shock, they probably um, benefited from 9-11 in the fact that people saw they still wanted to take vacations, but they didn't want to fly to Italy or fly to wherever. Right. They they could drive to wherever they you know. And if you notice, all the cruise industries after nine eleven started putting sh- more ships in Tampa, Galveston, Texas, New Orleans, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City. So people can actually just drive. They don't have to take a flight because people are afraid to fly then. Right. Right. And, and uh, so the cruise industry actually benefited for that reason. Yeah. Because they they saw that as people saw cruising as a safe alternative uh for vacations mm-hmm. uh, but uh this the yeah uh, this is much worse than 911 if, if for our business yeah 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 cuz it's completely shut down and probably till the end of summer yeah do you see any major changes coming to the cruise industry now well what i think is going to happen is they're not going to fill the ships uh for a while mm-hmm. they're going to uh make people socially distant mm mm-hmm distance themselves yeah. uh you know in the theaters they'll only let them sit like one every four uh yeah this my uh yeah. connection still at royal caribbean i know that's what royal caribbean's doing they're just gonna ha- they're gonna initially just come out with four ships they have 25 or 28 ships they're only gonna come out with four they're gonna only put like a third or a half uh, amount of people and just make everybody spread out mm-hmm. no buffets everything will be served uh mm-hmm. but so it's gonna be different and it, it's gonna take a couple years before it goes back to normal yeah yeah wow all right, so we'll uh, we'll see cruises. People that love because people that love to cruise love to cruise. They do. Yeah, and uh, they want. I'm sure they want this industry to to come back soon. Um, is there anything I didn't ask you that? Uh, any other information? Any other stories about being stuck on that ship? I've, I've seen. You know, I don't know how big your cabin is, but you know, sometimes the cabins on the ships are rather small. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've I've read the stories of people that are were stuck on on ships on right. cruise ships. Then I've also seen read stories of people that are stuck uh, in their uh, cabana on the Maldives. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? You know, there's two right. different ways to be trapped somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty high up in the pecking order on a cruise ship, so usually I have a pretty pretty okay cabin. Nice. But I mean, the entry level crew guys. I mean, they this you're the booth that we're in right now is probably twice the size of a. Uh, Crew cabin, there would be two people living in there. Oh, no. Yeah, and then they would oh. share share a bathroom with the next cabin. So oh. there would be four people sharing one. Yeah, so that's... For the record, this room is probably, uh, what, uh, 10 by 8, 12 by yeah, 8? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, this wow. is about as big as my bedroom on the ship, but then I have, like, a living room, too. So. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, well, Kirk, thank you so much for coming in. It is my pleasure. And talking to us uh, about... Uh, what had to be a bit of an ordeal uh, being yeah. stuck yeah. there. Yeah, I, I just pity the people that are still there. Yeah. Because 31 days, ag- again, the thing was is like when you started out, I didn't know it was going to be 31 days. I thought it was going to be 10 or a week, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. They just kept adding on to it. Then it was but, – but, the, yeah, the guys are still there. They've been there two months now, and they're not getting paid either. Ugh. They quit paying us April 2nd. Wow. Except for essential workers. Yeah. But since we had no guests, I guess the uh, cruise director to entertain guests was not essential. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I'm glad you're back home. Yes, I'm me glad, too. Uh, I'm glad uh, the, the State Department and everybody could, uh, everybody involved, Sherrod Brown. Again. Yes, thank you, Sherrod, and whatever his assistant's name was, I should have. <laughs> I'm sure he's listening right now. Yeah, but, uh, well, we're glad to have you back home. Thank and, you. And, uh, you know, good luck. Well, thanks for having me. You bet. Kirk right. Detweiler again uh, on one of the cruise ships stuck in. Mumbai, India for 31 days on a ship. No other guests on board. Nothing for you to do. But oh, there's plenty to do. I was I became oh. the cruise director for the crew. So we uh, we <laughs> did you still put we, on shows and things like that? Well, yeah, we did all just, our shows. Yeah, actually, we did. did we you, entertained them. Just we keep did practicing? activities. Well, they worked all day. So in the evening, we did. We we had movies in the big theater. Yeah, we did sports tournaments. We I did pff, how many ping pong tournaments? Their cricket is big there, so they did cricket tournaments and soccer tournaments. Okay. And they were huge. And we would do, you know, have my D- I had two DJs, so I had them play pool parties every night. Oh, nice. So I mean, the ship was ours, and the, and the and the captain and the hotel director were great about allowing us to, uh, uh, you know, entertain. They wanted to keep the spirits up. Sure. And they kept the crew bar open. Hey, there you go. 
<laughs> there that you go. Always helps. Was the, was the food still really good? Yeah. You know what? i got to say that's the best crew food I've ever had because I love curry. <laughs> and I, so I had curry for lunch and dinner the whole time I was there. <laughs> I, was in, I was in heaven. Yeah. And this was made by Indian chefs, too. It's not, oh, so they knew what know, they were doing. Like, yeah. It was like real Indian food. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, that's, that sounds great. So that was it, one of the benefits. Cricket. I've seen cricket, but I have no idea how well, it Well, I, I was on the team, and they're like, just stand there. I'm like, explain <laughs> the rules to me. <laughs> Am I supposed to swing this bat? I, like, I, I, liked, I like, played one inning, and I left. I just told <laughs> I said, guys, you're just doing this to make fun of me. <laughs> I'm going to go to do some work. Oh, that's Get somebody else. <laughs> yes. All right. Again, Kirk Detweiler, uh, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. My Glad pleasure. Glad you're back home. Thank you so much. All right. We've got more coming up on True Blues 97.5.